Thanks for joining us on the Cultured Meat and Future Food Show. On this episode, we're excited to have Lavanya Anandan. Lavanya is the head of partnerships and external innovation within the Strategy and Transformation Group at Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany, a global life science and pharmaceutical company. Based at the company's innovation hub, right here in the San Francisco Bay Area, she is leading the exploration of how these parallel industries can accelerate cultured meat development. Lavanya has held diverse roles in sales, marketing, and strategy within the biotech industry. She has a PhD in molecular and cellular biology from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I had a great discussion with Lavanya and I learned about how larger companies work with really every type of player in the industry. Let's jump right in. Thanks for joining us on the Cultured Meat and Future Food Show. Thanks for having me on, Alex. Lavanya, please tell us a little bit about your background and when you started working on projects related to cell cultured meat. Yes. So my background, I am a molecular biologist by training. I did my undergraduate and PhD degrees focused on cancer biology from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, our alma mater. When we first connected, Alex, it was great to know that you also went there. So after my studies, I joined Sigma Aldridge, which was later acquired by Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany. And I've enjoyed working on many fun challenges in many different functions within the company, from sales and marketing to strategy and innovation. About two and a half years ago, I joined the Silicon Valley Innovation Hub, which is the group that I am part of today, which was a brand new adventure for the company. Our mandate was to explore up and coming trends in science and technology to identify a new topic in which we could build new business ventures. And one such topic at the time and continues to be today was future foods. And I would say this is where the stars aligned for me. I love food and I had been following the field of cellular agriculture quite closely. Based in the Bay Area here, I used to attend IndieBio's demo days and in 2016 heard about Memphis Meats as well as Geltor. I think it was called Gelzen at the time. And I was totally fascinated. It was like my two love affairs colliding, right? So biotech or biomedical sciences and food. So to fundamentally rethink animal-derived proteins, I thought that was a very cool concept. So when I was asked internally to lead our efforts into future foods, I immediately said, yes, of course. So through that process, we narrowed down to cultured meat. And so basically in 2018 is when I started taking a closer look at the cultured meat topic. So Merck KGAA Darmstadt Germany is a global company dating back to over 300 years. And it's Really crazy to actually say that out loud, <laughs> three, over 300 years. Yes. What are some of the main things that Merck KGAA does as a company and what's your team's focus? Yes. So our company, the, the story of the company is quite unique. As you said, more than 300 years. The company's history actually dates back to 1668 and was actually a pharmacy back then in Darmstadt, Germany, our headquarters which is close to Frankfurt. And today it is a 16 billion euro company and is still majority family owned. So quite unique in that aspect. And the reason that we have grown and thrived over the centuries, I think, is because of our ability to adapt with changing times and also the diversity of our businesses. So we have three business sectors, healthcare, life science and performance materials. As a healthcare company, we develop drugs for diseases like cancer. As a life science company here in the U.S., we're known as Millipore Sigma. We develop tools and technologies to enable the biotech and pharma industry to go from discovery all the way to manufacturing and scale up. And as a performance materials company, which is an area that not many people are aware of, our company also develops specialty chemicals and materials, say, for the semiconductor industry. So we really touch many parts of people's lives, right, with life-saving therapies, 
to reagents in the lab, to even displays of our smartphones and laptops have our materials. So as a company, we have really a lot of expertise in various science and tech topics. So our teams work, you know, in relation to that is we want to look far beyond into the future and keep innovating and investing in these paradigm shifting technologies like cultured meat. Great. And what are some of the programs that Merck KGAA supports as it relates specifically to cultured meat? And this could be either through your team or other departments. And I know that there are folks that are working on cell cultured meat in different parts of the world, I believe. Mm -hmm. That's, That's absolutely right. So just to set the background, right? So as a life science company, we have decades of experience helping biotech and pharma successfully bring drugs to the market. And we have deep expertise in areas such as cell culture media and bioprocessing technology. So at the core of what we do is research and development, right, with the aim of developing novel solutions to help accelerate the field of cultured meat. And we have, a, as you said, a really talented and dedicated group of scientists and engineers that are passionate about the field. They are based in different parts of the globe. So we have the California office. We have a hub in Boston. And we also have R&D work happening in Kansas and also in Darmstadt, Germany. So we are kind of spread. We're a global team. So the team is working on topics such as cell culture, media, analytical assays or scaffolds that need to be tailor made for this new field. These R&D efforts are headed up by my colleague, Aleta Schnitzler, and uh, she will be giving a talk on our culture media initiative during the CMS 20 online. So tune in live or hear the recordings to get much more of a deep dive picture into our cell culture media initiative. In addition to R&D, we are taking a comprehensive look into regulatory frameworks, which I think is extremely important. And you will hear from my colleague, Luke Groschal, as well at the same event. And finally, you know, we believe that communication and education around this topic is crucial for consumer adoption. So from the start, we have engaged in proactive external communication, right, through webinars, conference presentations, to raise awareness among future consumers and also scientists, as well as folks like food engineers who really will be the industry's future talent pipeline. So that's been a big focus for us as well. Great. And if you don't tune in live for those sessions, we'll be sure to put a recording in the show notes. So be sure to check that out. As a cultured meat startup founder, how specifically would Merck KGAA be able to help a company's research goals? Yes. So our primary focus currently is on cell culture media, right? So we welcome conversations with startups to discuss development of customized media formulations for their specific cell types and their specific processes. And with our startup partners, we are their trusted consultants, and we're constantly having conversations around how can we help them overcome challenges in bioprocessing, regulatory, right, today in lab scale, but also helping companies anticipate challenges and talk about possible solutions as they start to move into pilot scale and think about commercial scale. So they're really fully prepared and ready for prime time. Okay, great. And so for this, actually, I had a follow up regarding are there situations where Merck KGAA is currently working with some of the large scale food producers or incumbents in the space in regards to technology? Or are we a little bit too early for that stage? Yeah, so I would say the large meat producers are our customers today, right? We actually have a line of testing products that are used to understand safety, quality, as well as nutritional attributes of conventional meat. So that's for conventional meat, right? So they are our customers and we interact with them as kind of strategic partners on a regular basis. With regards to cultured meat, we want to do that, right? We envision collaborating closely with the large meat producers and want to start having deeper discussions with them. The cultured meat field today, I think, is filled with biotech experts, right, that are trying to make a food product. 
And the large meat producers like Tyson and Cargill and PHW, they have a wealth of experience in creating safe and tasty products for the consumer, right? And we need to leverage this knowledge and partner in the early days to be successful as a field. So we're really looking forward to having those conversations and partnering up early with large meat producers. I want to shift gears a little bit and really ask a question for the future consumers that are out there. When we go to like scientific conferences, researchers who are putting together presentations, they're very optimistic about the industry, but they do have these like 10 years or longer timeframes where this might be available. And alternatively, there are more business focused conferences that startup founders are pitching at. And they're kind of releasing timelines and release dates for 2021 or 2022. What can the consumers really think of when they hear about these early release dates? And from a R&D standpoint, what do you make of this? Is there any chance that we're going to get these products so early? Yeah, that's a really great question. And coming at it from a scientific angle, right, we're starting to see a few papers now being published on the techno-economic feasibility of cultured meat that is estimating the cost of production at full commercial scale. In essence, these studies show that scale is achievable, but with technological innovation and quite a bit more innovation will be required to bring the cost down to conventional meat. And that is likely going to take that 10-year time frame. So knowing all of this, I think when the startups speak about bringing products to the market next year, it is feasible that they can produce cultured meat and seafood products, most likely hybrid products with plant-based additions. I see this happening in high-end restaurants at a premium price. This is the marketing approach that plant-based companies have taken in the past. And I think this will be very important in establishing the narrative of the cultured meat field and also creating kind of familiarity around these products for our future consumers. Great. And I think that publication that you mentioned, is that from Derek Risner? Yes, that is one of the publications I'm referring to. Okay, great. Yeah. And I think it's so great that reports like that are coming out and we definitely need more of that. But it's definitely interesting to kind of look at that and what it will be like. And so I guess the consumers can know that with maybe a hefty price tag or an exclusive setting, they will be able to try at least some form of cultured meat. So those dates are not too far off. Yeah. And I think from the consumer's perspective, like putting myself in the consumer's shoes, I think future consumers should be super excited about possibly having this product out next year, right? I think we should look at it as an opportunity to eat real meat without guilt. I also see it as an opportunity to eat a piece of history. And most importantly, an opportunity to ask questions on the process, try to understand how do they achieve the quality? How do they achieve safety? And how do they achieve the taste? And how do they make it so close to conventional meat. So I think it's a really exciting opportunity if we can do that next year. So what's missing in the industry? What's currently not being talked about enough? Yeah, so this is something that we are talking about all the time, right? Sometimes there might be a lot of hype and excitement around the industry, but one needs to kind of ground in reality. And I think that's very important. What needs to be talked about more is, I think, in-depth discussions around reliability and safety. So we're talking about growing millions of liters of cells just to be able to meet the demand for cultured meat from one city. And cultured meat should be much safer from a microbiological perspective. Pathogens that animals carry and pass on to us will not be as much of a threat. However, when you are thinking about growing millions of cells in a bioreactor, contamination is something to keep in mind. So we will need to build really robust production facilities and have full control and supervision across these facilities. And this will require a close collaboration and really orchestration between 
the meat producers, engineering firms, and also companies like us that can create customized monitoring tools, analytical platforms, as well as data management tools. And of course, the regulatory agency. So all of these groups need to work together so we can ensure quality and safety across the entire process, right? Start to finish. So I think this is a very, very important topic. We're starting to look at this closely as a community, but we need to do much more deeper discussions and collaboration as well. So with that being said, can you imagine a future, and this is a little bit more of an abstract question, but can you imagine a future where cell cultured meat is the norm or is the standard, for example, at a butcher shop or in the retail setting? Yes, you know, absolutely. Resoundingly, yes. I do imagine a future where we will have a variety of protein options to choose from. And I do believe that cultured meat will be a part of our diets. I also imagine that products will have full transparency. All our protein options will have full transparency regarding process, regarding safety, and also things like environmental impact and nutritional aspects. So consumers will really be able to make fully informed decisions based on their food preferences and also the personal values. So absolutely think that cultured meat will be part of our diets and on our tables in the future. I've had some fun asking this question that pre-pandemic was a little bit <laughs> different than now post-pandemic. So I'll phrase it as prior to the pandemic, what would a typical day look like for you? And like I mentioned, I would usually say something like, if you were to step into your lab or workspace or office or desk and you looked around you, what would you see? So maybe prior to the pandemic, how would you answer that question? So typical work day involved a lot of in-person meetings amongst the team and also meetings with our partners and collaborators externally. Being a global team, we traveled quite a bit to meet our team members in our headquarters in Boston or Germany, as well as attending conferences globally. And one of the favorite elements of my job is engaging in workshop style discussions, coming up with new ideas and problem solving with whiteboards and lots of sticky notes, right? And we're doing this now all online and it's really not quite the same. I think being in the same room with other people and generating new ideas and problem solving is really energizing. And I think it has almost like a multiplying effect on creativity. So I definitely miss this quite a bit and look forward to one day getting back to those good old days. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You can get in touch with Lavanya on LinkedIn and learn about their initiatives at culturedmeat.emdgroup.com. Lavanya, do you have any last insights for our listeners today? Yeah, I think last insight, if I was going to say something, would be that collaboration is going to be key to successfully overcome the challenges around achieving commercialization. No one organization is going to be able to solve the challenges alone. So I really look forward to all of us, this whole community coming together, the startups, large meat producers, the suppliers like us, regulators and policymakers, as well as consumers, right? So all of us need to come together to push this field forward and create together the future of food that we all envision and the future of food that we all want. I am really very excited and looking forward to the next decade. Lavanya, thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your insights on the Future Food Show. Thanks again, Alex, for having me. And I really enjoyed our conversation. This is your host, Alex, and we'll see you on the next episode. This program was produced by H Media. We'll see you soon.